Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the participants of today's digital online seminar. As you can see on the screen, today's topic is instrumentation for separators. And as promised, uh, we got uh, experts with us uh, to help us uh, go through this topic. Uh, Matthias Kaiser, uh, you can see him in your screen. Actually, he's in the factory today. Then we have Arun Ayer. He is our gamma expert. He's, he's waving his hand. We have Erwin Dernsplit. He is going to take us, guide us through all the topics around flow measurement. And uh, this is Janish Givala. I will be your host and moderator for today's session. Arun, can we go to the next slide? This uh, series of uh, online seminars are organized by Andrews Hauser Group. And as you can see in the picture on the right hand top corner, this is where the headquarters is. Uh, this is in Switzerland. And uh, Andrus Hauser is a 2.6 billion euro turnover company. Last year also, uh, the results were quite strong. More than 14,300 employees, and we are happy that we could retain all of them, even in this pandemic and difficult times. Strong equity ratio and uh, Typically, we come up with many patents, and these patents are basically there so that uh, we can create value for our customers. Whenever you are faced with the challenging applications, please make sure you engage us in this topic. We like to develop uh, devices. Collaborative development is part of our culture, and we would like to help you solve your measurement challenges. And um, as we are in oil and gas seminar, we would like to focus on safety at this moment. And uh, looking at the current situation, I would like to talk about safety in uh, pandemic or COVID times. Make sure you wear a mask when you're in public. Maintain your distance from others. Uh, this is to make sure that you can break the chain. You can avoid spreading the virus. Wherever possible, use the tracking app so if you are even asymptomatically positive, then you can contain the chain. At the same time, if possible, vaccinate yourself so that we can get back to real normalcy. Now, as you can see on the screen, uh, separator is probably the first real process where we do separation of oil from the rest of the stuff. And there is a lot of things in the rest of the stuff. Uh, and uh, when we look at oil itself, you get oils of different API grades and the oil also contains different stuff in it. Like you might have oil with more paraffin in it. Maybe the oil is highly viscous, okay? The API index could be different. The oil well itself is at a stage where you are using different uh, uh, forms of enhanced oil recovery. So that's, that's also going to influence what you are going to see inside a separator. Based on the life of the oil, maybe you are seeing more gas along with oil, or you're seeing less gas. Maybe you are using more water along with in the separation process. So this is a very challenging process overall. And that's why one single measurement technology cannot be uh, the sure shot way of solving this problem. And that's what we are showing in the picture, which you, which you see on your screen. Different oil demands different measurement techniques. And this is where Endress Hauser has basically excelled. Reason being, based on your challenge, based on your condition, we will select the right technology which fits your application. Pressure changes or sulfur, these are all the challenges, and we will help you throughout your uh, process as well. Um, can we go to the next slide? Jensh, are you able to see the next slide on the separator application? No. Uh, can we go to the next one? Ah, excellent. So uh, this is what we are going to focus on today. Well, you could have horizontal separators, vertical separators. Maybe you have different sorts of uh, veers and stuff like that. But the measurement challenge boils down to this. You might end up having a clear separation which you see on the left-hand side, or you might have separation with emulsion, 
which creates more challenges. Maybe you have a wet gas condition or you might have bubbles in your oil leg, etc. So there are different challenges and we will capture or we will master each challenge one at a time. And to start our discussion, I would like to invite Matthias Kaiser to talk about level measurement inside the separate. Over to you, Matthias. Thank you, Janet. Um, and now let's start with a, let's say, straightforward and kind of easy uh, application or scenario that we can have a clear interface between oil and water. Um, I have to admit this is quite seldom and you might not probably see it that often uh, really in upstream business. However, I just wanted to show you. And as I said, this is kind of easy to measure with a guided wave radar. And the reason for this is the physical principle of guided wave radars. So a guided wave radar will send an electromagnetic wave from the top to the surface of the oil. And since there is a clear change of the so-called dielectric constant between the air or gas and the oil, so air is the dielectric constant of one, oil it's typically two or three, and we see a clear cut here, a clear jump from the one to the other. And this will give us a reflection. So if you have a look at the echo signal in the middle, on the top side, you will see a nice reflection. So we can measure this perfectly. Well, and then since the dielectric constant again of oil is quite low compared to other media, a lot of the energy, a lot of the electromagnetic waves will travel further. So they will travel through the oil down to the water surface. And water again has a dielectric constant of 80. So this is like a mirror for the, the electromagnetic wave more or less. So we will get a nice reflection even after traveling through the oil from the water. And this is, this is what you see on the echo signal. We get two very clear, very nice signals for the top level of the oil and also for the interface level because the interface is a very clear one. Um, there is no emulsion in this case. So one click, please. Yeah, that's what I what I said, interface and level in one device. That's very nice here, even in changing process conditions. Um, and with this, I would like to have a look at the next scenario. So now what's gonna happen if we have an emulsion? And as I said, it's typical to have an emulsion. This is what's gonna happen. We will kind of lose the echo signal of the interface level. So. The top level is still fine. This is oil and, and gas or, or air. So they, we will get a clear reflection there. But as soon as the emulsion um, gets too big, we will kind of lose this signal because that's kind of clear. There is no clear jump between the one media and the other media, but it kind of gradually changes from oil to water. And the electromagnetic wave just doesn't find anything any clear jump, any clear cut to be reflected from. And this is then the case. If you have emulsion like this, if it's a certain thickness of emulsion, you might start losing the signal um, completely even. Only the interface signal, not the top level signal. Um, but it might kind of, kind of makes the measurement unreliable. So yes, we at Anderson Hauser, we claim ourselves to be a specialist for level measurement. For sure, we also have a technology for that a so-called capacitance probe. It's kind of an old school or rather old school measurement technology. Actually, it's the, the first one that we used at Anderson Hauser, but it's a well-known and very reliable measurement technology. And with this technology, we will be sure that we can easily measure the interface level, even if we have a lot of emulsion. We will definitely get that signal. So if you click one more time, that's what you see then. So you see there is a clear interface. It's kind of the, the middle of the average emulsion layer that we can see there. But what you can also see, there is no top level. We can only measure one measurement value with a capacitance probe. So we can't measure both. So we will get the interface, very reliable, very nice, but we have a problem because we don't have the top level. Well, it's not such a big problem. We could put in another guided wave radar to measure only the top level. You could also even put, try to put in a free space radar. So there are ways to also measure the top level, but you always need a second device. So you could put in a second device to measure that stuff. Well, second device, okay, you have double the maintenance work. You have maybe doubled the costs, not, not really, but a bit more costs definitely. 
Um, maybe the bigger point here is that you don't want to have a second hole in your vessel, right? So you probably don't want a second device in there. And this, and now I guess you, you know where this is leading to. This brought us to the idea, why not combining a capacitance probes, probe with a guided wave radar into one device? And this is what we did. Uh, it's called FMP55, Levelflex FMP55, our sensor fusion model. Um, what you see now here sounds pretty easy. Yeah, why not just putting two devices, two measuring principles together? But to make it work as reliable as it does, it's kind of a, a, an effort in development. So it's not as easy as it sounds like, but it should be as easy for you as, as users or operators as it sounds like. And we have a lot of experience already in this field. We have a lot of these in, um, devices now installed in the field since years and they work perfectly. So this really works. And what you see here now is actually, or what you could you click back twice? Ah, so what you see here now, that's the right one. What you see here is actually, it's literally literally putting two devices into the tank, what you can see on the left-hand side, a guided wave radar, which will always bring us the top level. Um, and if we, if we don't have an emulsion, this will also tell us the interface level. So we first, first of all, our priority one is guided wave radar. We will rely on this. As soon as the emulsion gets too big, we lose the guided wave ra radar signal, or we, 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 we might lose it, but at the same time, it will automatically switch to capacitance mode. So then we get the top level from the guided wave radar and the interface level from the capacitance mode. And this will happen automatically. You will not even notice it, and you don't want to care about it, right? You just want the measurement. Um, and this will happen totally automated. Next click, please. So uh, yeah, this is what you get in any in any case, and you, it will just switch from one or the other, from one to the other whenever needed. So next next slide, please. You can go on. Here you see an example of such a separator. On the left hand side, you see an FMP55 mounted on top. That's the the one with capacitance and guided wave radar in one device, and this is measuring. Uh, the media before the weir. So it's measuring the oil, the emulsion, and the water. On the right-hand side, you see an FMP51, a standard guided wave radar, with which we measure just the oil level after the weir. So we don't measure an emulsion there anymore, just the oil level. So this is the typical instrumentation that you can have. And to go further on the left-hand side, on top of the vessel, you see another blue device. This is a, typically a pressure device where we also uh, measure the pressure of such a vessel and on the right hand side um, this is a vibronic fork switch to control let's say the overfill or let's to do the overfill prevention of this vessel and below the vessel you see a couple of flow meters and Erwin is going to talk about this in more detail so you see yes it's a nice solution um, which will also work in many, many cases, but there are some restrictions for this FMP55, for the sensor fusion concept. First of all, if you want to also see more details inside the vessel, if you want to see the, the sand, if you want to want to see foam, if you want to have a very, very exact profile of your vessel, then this is maybe not the right solution for this. And there is another topic which which causes problems is if you have very heavy oil, very sticky stuff, um, or extra heavy oil, then we run into problems because this guided wave radar and capacitance probe in one always needs a so-called coaxial system. So you could say it's kind of a, you need a pipe around the rod actually. And this you can get this directly from the factory already calibrated, that's maybe the easiest way to, to, to order such a thing. Or you can also use your stilling wells or bypasses which you already have on your vessel but we need a coaxial system definitely and that's the problem so if you have very sticky stuff a lot of wax a lot of paraffins in your stuff that comes from the well then this might stick and block these coaxial systems and then we run into problems so typically we say if you have an api grade of less than 20 this is not a real good solution to go for but okay there's a kind of a gray zone 
But definitely, if you have very sticky stuff, this will just stick on the walls and just destroy the reliability of your measurement, even if you do maintenance and cleaning and stuff like this. This is maybe not a thing to go to, but for sure, we also have a solution for this. Since we are kind of experts for level measurement, at least that's what we claim. Um, we have a solution for this. It's a radiometric solution, gamma solution, and I'm not the expert for gamma, so I hand over to Arun because he knows all the details about that stuff. Arun, go ahead. Yeah, thanks a lot, Matthias. So, like Matthias said, we always say when nothing works, we switch over to gamma, right? And uh, regardless of what your API grade is, how much is your uh, stickiness in your oil, or how how much uh, different uh, parameters you have inside your separator regardless of all these factors uh, density profiling system with a nucleonic measurement will always work so i'm going to cover five topics in a nutshell which would cover the whole um, points regarding to the gamma measurement or density profiler let's first have a look from the gamma point of view how a separator works then we go on to the overview and working of the density profiling system then i show you some installations and how the system needs to be installed inside a separator and then we go on to our density profile calculator or we call it the profile vision and then a final short summary to finish off with right so let's let's first have a look on the separator itself so whenever we have a separator we typically say we the separator is somewhere for 35 to 40 meters in length and the first thing that I think everyone knows is that because of the gravitational separation across the length of the separator, you are never going to have a profile that is same across the length. So typically when inside, when the inlet is on your left side, then you're going to have much more sand and emulsion um, and less oil content at the start. And as on when the separation takes place, and with time, you are going to slowly proceed towards the wire, for example, here on the right side, where you are going to have comparatively more oil content and less of sand content and comparatively less emulsion as well, right? And typically a sand outlet is somewhere 20 to 30 meters away from a wire and you have water outlet, which is five or 10 meters away, okay? So then the question of course is, is the water and sand output important? There are different stages of separation and depending on which stage you are, you are, you are employing the separation, you may say water and sand on puts are also important or you may say no i need to just focus on the oil that's overflowing from the wheel so when you say that okay water and sand outputs are also important then often the question that comes to us is if you are going to monitor only close to the wheel with a single nozzle there how is the measurement which is 20 meters away going to be a realistic representation of your profile Okay, if you want to take out sand from this part and you are basing your judgment based on the output that's being taken away from here, then most probably your output is of no use when you are trying to desand your separators, right? And if no, if you say that, okay, I don't need, um, in this case, I don't need a complete um, measurement, then why do you need 30 or 40 sources across the vessel when you can just focus on the overflowing across the wear. So we have two approaches typically when depending on the phase where the separation is taking place or the stages and we put it as follows. So when you say that, yes, I'm at very early stage of my separation where all the three inputs are important or all the three parameters are important, we suggest to split the measurement into three independent units, right? we say we place the density sensors where they should be so typically in such a case we split the density measurement into three profiles or three sections and you have them profile uh, positioned in such a way that they are very close to the outlet uh, from where the measurement is to be made right and so when you have on the lower section uh, typically you have the density sensors placed then you see a profile between the sand and the water so you have much accurate geographically uh, more logical positioning of the sensor so that you can carefully monitor your sand outlet. And then you have in the middle section somewhere oil, water, and um, oil, water, and the emulsion layer where you can clearly see or control your emulsion profile. And finally, on the third level, close to the beer, you have the detectors placed on the top so that you see the overflowing of the oil, the foam, um, and the gas 
and water profile right and when you say that no we are at third or fourth stage of our separation where what really matters for us is the oil which is overflowing through the weir we are not so particular about the sand and water output then we say we only provide you one source we measure where it matters so we don't install tens or 20 number of sources we just position one source close to the weir and we monitor accurately oil emulsion and overhead gas near the weir good so let's have a look at the system in itself what does a density profiling system comprise of so you have first on the radiometric instrument side you need a source container which houses the source the source container is then installed inside a dip tube or a kind of thermo well to say so and you have the source which is getting lowered into this dip pipe and then of course on the outside of the vessel you have several detectors mounted on the vessel plus of course the mechanical frame that you need to consider and then on the calculation side the hardware and the software part you have a profile vision compact and this is our density computer which calculates the level values from the densities which is getting measured so let's go into each of them first uh, we jump into the working itself how does the uh, what's the working principle how does the measurement work so like i said earlier you have a dip tube you lower the source inside this dip tube once you lower it you have several detectors which are equidistantly placed from this source position typically up to 10 detectors i'm showing here up to six detectors okay and then the measuring range typically the detectors are so divided that you have every 100 meters one detector right and we call this layers of measurement and how the measurement in itself works is across each layer the detector calculates your uh, density and from the first density of course the second one so if you have a beam path here of the complete measurement which is being calculated by four then for detector number five you have half of it being referenced from the output of four and the next half of it being measured by the fifth detector itself and so on so it's a geographical distribution of the detectors and from this you calculate the density of the complete layers up to an accuracy of each around 100 mm the important point here to note is the measurement is continuous measurement and not multi-point measurement that means you are going to see the profile not of specific points but the complete profile in itself so how let's let's have a look how does the output look like um, when you have different scenarios so when you have the water and emulsion completely lower then you see all the six detectors showing the oil density here and as on when you have say a typical oil or emulsion then for example the six detector is going to show you the density of oil and then the density slowly keeps on increasing towards the emulsion and then towards water and then the final detector the first detector is going to just show you the maximum density right and if then you have obviously a hiring level of the liquid or water then you are going to see the lower detectors all giving you much higher density and then you have a very good idea of where is the water emulsion oil layer so with this system you are always in control where the emulsion is where the oil is and where the water is i will come when when we talk about the density calculator i will also come across uh, about the modular approach janish told you about the different apis and how oil densities are not going to be same oil and emulsion densities i will talk about this when we come to the density calculator right so now let's let's have a quick look on the mechanical part how the installation takes place so a dip pipe protects it's it's also a protection and a guiding mechanism for the source to go into the dedicated position right and we we do the calculations and the engineering and we find out what's the optimum position to position your source and then we suggest what should the dip tube be and how long it should be now depending on how the nozzles are and how the installation needs to be we typically have either a straight dip tube or a bent dip tube we normally suggest for a straight dip tube but if it's a retrofitting of a vessel or um, a vessel which is existing then of course you cannot change the nozzle positions then we need to go with a bent dip pipe right and this almost completes uh, the source installation procedure that's all so you see here uh, uh, installation from one of the separators you have a spool piece and then the source is lowered inside 
and you have the cable here which is used to lower the source inside uh, the deep pipe and then coming to the detectors you could have det so detectors are mounted outside which means the detectors are always accessible from maintenance point of view if there is a problem or an error from one of the detectors you can always replace them unlike some other uh, measurements where the detectors are also inside the vessel so you're not rendered blind if one of the detector fails you are, ha always have access to them and the mounting is pretty simple you you can either put in a straight frame where you have um, different levels provided for the mounting of the detector and give clamps to mount them but we always suggest a better approach is a bended frame which is following the curvature of the vessel right but we help in all these uh, calculations and positioning etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's that's for the mechanical part and then now i come to the um, density calculator part what the detectors what you see here is the detectors are going to give you only the density output but from the density output you need to calculate or what makes sense for you as a user is you need accurate level of the profile where where is emulsion at what level and at what level is oil and at what level is water for example right and that's why the outputs from the density detectors they are then connected to our profile vision which is the density calculator and this is how a typical profile vision looks like where based on the density inputs coming it automatically um, gives you values say okay we have a density of say 759 kg per meter cube at between 1703 mm and 1830 mm or so and it, it provides a very clear uh, distinguishing at what level what density is available and the good part or the beauty of this system is that if you're installing it in Canada, you may have densities of say seven, 800 onwards could be oil because you have uh, comparatively not so great oil to say Saudi Arabia from the quality. And say in Saudi Arabia, you may have 750 to 800 is what you would qualify as oil. So you can set these things inside our density calculator, which says, okay, my emulsion typically is between this density to this density and my oil is between 800 to 750 and anything up beyond 850 is say water then automatically the profiler for the next time it is going to show you directly oil emulsion and water based on your input so it's modular based on where you are installing you can automatically configure the density calculator and of course our service colleagues are always there to help you and most probably when you say this is the geographic location where we are installing we already have experience and we also can suggest you, right? And then of course, from the profile vision, you have communication going to your DCS or SCADA through Modbus and the devices themselves communicate with the uh, density calculator or profile vision using Heart or Profibus. So that kind of completes our measurement. Um, so I would like to now summarize what, what we saw why do you choose an Anderson Hauser density profiler system because we give you a continuous density profile and not multi points so you are always aware of the complete profile and not just in few points we measure where it is really required our aim is to keep the radioactive source minimum we don't want to uh, give 40 or 30 or 40 sources across your vessel because safety is something that we uh, really give a lot of importance to and we don't want to oversell the radioactive sources our source containers are low weight because you are talking only about one source. That means it's easy transport, easy installation, and easy retraction as well. Because you need to remember each time you need to put a source inside and remove. When you have a shutdown or maintenance, this in itself is a process where you need uh, radiation safety officers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so easy retraction is something that's very important from the maintenance point of view. We say only one source and up to three sources, which means you need to also think of the time when the sources are too old and they need to be replaced or disposed. Radiation sources cannot be thrown away directly. You need a proper disposal where you need to store them back and this costs and these have several, several logistic steps. So less are the sources, low is your replacement and disposal cost. We, we do one-time calibration and you get both level and density. So it's a maintenance free system. Also remember that the detectors are placed outside. So you always have an access to the detectors. 
you have clearly density and level heights provided and the output is modular so you can tailor suit it according to your needs in your location and then you get a complete system with a local human machine interface that means you have the same information for all operators so before i now hand it over to Irvin, i would like matthias to turn on his screen because we have the possibility today to have a look on the demo system that's installed installed in our factory so as you see on the top matthias um, the yellow part that's the source container there okay and then you have the bended frame and the detectors installed around and then on the side you have a panel with the profile vision so here the output would be very similar to what i showed you on the presentation so this typically completes our um, density profiler system thanks a lot matthias thanks arun uh, before, so you have seen today uh, two important level measurement techniques and uh, now we come to the most important part flow measurement on the water leg oil leg and gas leg and this is the one where you see a lot of challenges and Erwin Dorensplit has numerous uh, let's say long years of experience meeting customers and talking about what solution best fits there over to you Erwin yeah thank you uh, Janice thank you Arun well we already uh, talked a lot about separators and of course uh, that is in the meantime a very common way to uh, to see to optimize your oil production there are different kind of separators uh, it's most simple one is a tank system where you see a separation we have two phase separators three phase separators uh, the picture on the 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 middle and the bottom is actually a mobile separator this picture is taken in the us in 2017 where we did uh, some 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 testing with our coriolis flow meters but we all see the same same challenges um, also here, for example, and with this mobile test facility, the customer is testing roughly every month each of his wells to get a report and to, to see what comes out of my, my well. Do there still oil coming out? If not, then they need to do something. Water flooding, for example, or steam flooding. And that's typically what customers do. They do this testing programs um, that can take up to 8 to 24 hours. The mobile testing is typically taking 3 to 4 hours. And you can repeat the testing, for example, uh, up to every 30 days to have a really an idea what comes out of your, of your, your well. The expected occurrence it might vary with customers. Some customers want to really have a rough indication. Other customers want to have a more detailed indication. But of course, the most important thing is they with this test data, they want to continue the production and they, they want that their production remains constant. Um, but, uh, and also it is very important that you detect problems with the well. For example, what we saw in, in California the, from the picture, we the, saw there, for example, that there was a well pumping and there was not a single drop of oil coming out anymore. So there it was also used to detect the problems because that well desperately needed a water flood to be able to produce oil again. Click, uh, click Janice, please, of Arun. Click to the next slide. So we see in the, in the separators a couple of measurement challenges in terms of flow measurement. If you see in this picture, typical separator, uh, what comes out on the bottom is first of all the oil after the, the, the wear. Then of course we have the water coming out before the wear and on top you have the gas coming out. Typical example of a three-phase separator. If the separator is sized correct and there is a decent uh, product coming out of the well, this all works perfectly fine. But the problem starts when, for example, the well starts to age. And uh, for example, if you use uh, very intensively EOR, advanced oil recovery, you have more and more water coming out. Um, or for example, you have more gas coming out, also very typically over time. Then you see, for example, that the, uh, the oil lag starts not only to measure oil, but you have oil with entrained gas. That is a problem for a Coriolis flow meter and, and typically used measuring principle for that. On the top of the uh, separator, we have the gas coming out. Typically, you see that people use orifices there. Uh, Vortex is another solution. But as soon as the wet gas comes out there, you have a problem. Um, and there also we have a solution in the form of a, a dedicated ultrasonic gas flow meter. And of course, on the water leg, where you can install a magnetic inductive flow meter, uh, or for example also an ultrasonic flow meter but at the moment that the, there is sand coming out you also get abrasive effects 
So then you really need, a, for example, a macrometer with, for example, a suitable liner, like an ETFE liner, which is resistant against these solid particles. Each of these flow meters also can give you information, not only the flow rate, but also the diagnostic information is very important because it helps you de to detect a problem with your separator and or with the condition of your, your, your well. Because if, for example, you have a lot of scent coming out, you get slugging. Uh, your, your oil, your water, your gas flow can get, get, get slugging effects. You don't want that. You get then a buildup of pressure. Our flow meter with the diagnostic capabilities can also give you an indication from what is going on there. For example, the Coriolis can detect gas, but it can also detect sand. Not in, the, not in combination, but one or the other, it can detect and it can give you an index for that. Also important is changing conditions. I um, mean, if we know anything for sure that in the oil and gas industry, there is nothing stable. The flow conditions, the process conditions change all the time. So you need flow meters who are able to, to deal with this. For example, the gas measurement on the top of the separator. Normally, of course, you have dry gas coming out. But what happens if suddenly your gas is wet? Or there's really suddenly 100% uh, water coming through? And then it stops again. Is the meter coming back online? That is very, very important. So we have three solutions. We have our Mac flow meter portfolio, what we call the Pro Mac. Then we have the Coriolis portfolio. There we have actually two most suitable flow meters. We call it the Promes F and the Promes Q. And on the gas leg, we have the Prosonic Flow G 300 or 500. Please click. Specifically about the Coriolis, uh, this is a picture of uh, what we call the Promes Q. That is actually one of our latest developments. In the meantime, already a couple of years ago, uh, we introduced on the market in 2018. But this device is really optimized in terms of density measurement and trained gas and process sensitivity, or actually the fact that it is insensitive for, for process set setups. Density and trained gas and process sensitivity are really critical for this separated application, what we're talking about this, this, this morning. And this device can, first of all, really measure well the density. It has a very accurate density measurement. But very important also is because of the technology we have built in, it can also give you a proper density at the moment that you have entrained gas. And of course, if you have entrained gas, your density is dropping. If you are looking at the volumetric reading, you have an, an, an error there. This device can help there. That gas uh, entrained gas technology uh, is really able enables the device to deal with entrained gas. There we have different types of entrained gas. We'll come to that in a second. And of course, they have the process sensitivity. Think about temperatures, the changes in temperature, changes in, in pressure. They have an effect on Coriolis mass flow meters. This device is actually almost immune for these effects. We have very stable test results under, under uh, changing conditions. If you click to the next slide. Entrained gas is a very complicated topic. Whole seminars have been given about this, this topic, and also there is a lot of uh, nonsense uh, told to customers in the world. In, in general, you can say you have two types of entrained gas. You have the small air bubbles, the suspended bubbles, like you see in, on, the, on the left picture. Um, that is actually the most complicated kind of, of, uh, of, of effect. There you have a kind of a compressibility effect. In the science, they also call it a resonator effect. And this causes the meter to read high. For example, if you have an oil that has typically a higher viscosity, this is effect is, is, is very, uh, very uh, dominant and also it's very difficult to avoid because the high viscosity ensures that you hold the little bubbles in the oil. They, they cannot get out. You can leave them for, for a week in a separator, but they will not come out. So your meter has to be able to deal with that. Then we have on the, on the right side of this slide, we have a picture of the free bubbles. Typically, they are the, the large air bubbles. Uh, they typically come out uh, because, of course, uh, they have much more drive to go to, to, the, to the surface. They call, cause what we call a bubble or particle effect, and that uh, causing the meter to read low. So you're under reading, actually. You cannot. Uh, every Coriolis flow meter is dealing with the, these effects, and actually not only Coriolis flow flow meters, they have uh, effects caused by, by air, but specifically for Coriolis, you have this resonator and bubble effect. Specifically for the bubble effect, so the large bubbles, which are easy to avoid, 
by separating and let the air disappear. You can also think about an, uh, an air eliminator, you can increase the pressure, all these things help. If you cannot get rid of these big air bubbles, you have in theory a problem because there is no error compensation possible. So you do have an additional measuring error because you get a uh, an low reading on your mass flow and also of course your density is not, not, not correct. But it's relatively easy to, to avoid. The other one, suspended bubbles, with causing the resonator effect, are much more difficult. And there are stories in the world, for example, that yeah, if you measure with a low frequency, this is better. Yeah, that is not untrue, but you also have to realize that every advantage also has its disadvantage. So only a low frequency helps on one side, but does not help on the other side. So we have introduced what we call MFT, multi-frequency technology. Our PROMAS-Q, specifically the PROMAS-Q, offers an active correction of the resonator effect caused by these suspended bubbles. And with that, you really have a meter which can actively correct the error caused by these little, little bubbles. Go to the next slide, please. You see it already in the, uh, the, the animation. We actually, with this multi-frequency technology, we oscillate the meshing tubes in simultaneously in two different frequencies. And here we see the effect that in the first mode, the, the, the first frequency, we get the raw mass and density out of the device. But at the moment that you have entrained air, entrained gas in your fluid, you, we have seen the effect that depending on the frequency, the fluid responds differently. So by oscillating the tube parallel simultaneously in the second frequency, we get additional information. And this additional information helps us to, to actively compensate. And the meter can give out a corrected and also correct mass and density reading. So we're not using high frequency, we're not using low frequency, we're using multi-frequency. This is a very complicated topic. We have a white paper available about this if you want to know more. But I think the most important thing is this. This meter can actively correct and give you a proper reading. And it is important that we have the possibility that we, we have these measurement indexes. This device can also tell you, you can assign this signal to an output, tell you if you have gas in your fluid and or if you have sand. Like I said, not at the same time, but the PROMAS F can give you an indication for, for, for sand and for um, the bubble effect. So big air bubbles, the PROMAS Q can do the same for the small bubbles, for the suspended bubbles. Next slide, please. So allocation measurement is very important. People want to know in the end from what amount of oil is coming from, uh, from where. For, there they, for that, they use test separators. You want to get rid of the water. And it is very important that with these new innovative Coriolis technology, uh, uh, technology and developments, it is now really possible to have an accurate mass measurement. You can really do your allocation much more precise. We have a high accuracy and also repeatability to ensure this, this measurement. And the entrained gas handling uh, really avoids the wrong readings. But as you have seen, and actually that is it's just science, you do have this over and under reading effects and they can be pretty severe. So you really have a totally wrong measurement of your mass flow and also your, your density. And if you, for example, think in volume, they even have a double error. Next slide, please. And then, of course, we have the gas lag. We now talked about the Coriolis, where you typically have the oil lag. We have the MacFlow meter for the water lag. But on the top of the separator, you have typically the gas coming out. If there is pure gas coming out, you can measure that, for example, with a DP solution or with a vortex flow meter. Uh, especially with the vortex, you have a low flow cutoff, of course. But if you have an orifice or you have another type of flow meter, like a thermal mass flow meter, you have a problem there at the moment, the gas gets wet. We have designed the Prosonic Flow G uh, to be a wet gas flow meter. Of course, the device can also measure dry gas, but if the gas gets wet, this device, due to its meter and body design, can really very de well deal with this. If you look at the picture on the left side, you see a close-up of the, the sensor pockets. You see that we have machined these sensor sockets to really stimulate the draining of the fluid. Then the transducer is actually relatively small. 
meaning you have a large gap between the transducer and the body, and you need a lot of liquid collecting there uh, before you get to what we call an acoustical shortcut. That water connects the bridges, the transducer with the body. At that moment, you don't have a measurement anymore. That is virtually impossible. Uh, and then also for uh, vertical installations, we even have installed draining holes, which even allow the sensor socket to drain to drain out if you install the flow meter in a vertical line. On top of that, the transducers themselves are a complete new development. They are titanium, trans titanium transducers. They don't need a matching layer to overcome the acoustic impedance uh, between metal and gas. They have an extremely effective sound transmission and they have a built-in acoustical filter, which avoids that your measurement is being disturbed by uh, acoustic noise caused by, for example, a whistling valve or pumps or other things. This is really a very versatile meter. And in the end, it means that we have now a flow meter solution optimized for all the three outputs of a separator. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Irwin. Uh, as you can see, today we have uh, actually gone over our schedule time because uh, my speakers they are very passionate about the things they talk about. Uh, I think if you want, uh, Erwin can entertain you about entrained gas, suspended, free bubbles, all those topics for a whole day. But we try to compress the message within a very short period of time. And you also see that he's very passionate to talk about wet gas condition. The only thing Erwin looks for is to ensure that you get accurate measurement even in a challenging condition. Look back at gamma measurement. It can uh, the discussion can go very long. So if you want to engage with us in some sort of discussion, feel free to write to us on this topic. Now I would just quickly like to uh, share my screen so that you have something to take away for yourself as well. And uh, just one second. So now if you go on internet and just type applicator address, okay, then you have a good chance that you will land on this particular page. Okay, and all the instrumentation topics we covered today, they are here. You can go to flow measurement and then you land into ultrasonic gas flow measurement. If you go to level measurement, the first choice uh, comes up is the FMP55, but it also tells you alternative applications or measurements which you can use for this particular application. So look at this FMI51, gamma pilot, again along with a density profiling system. Production separator, if you look at underflow or basically the water leg, it talks about flow measurement, but then it also goes into conductivity measurement because you want to identify the quality of the water which is coming out. Every single measurement point which we talked about, it shows up over here. So make sure you go on Google, search for applicator endress oil and gas, and you will land on this page. And then this is something like a takeaway which you can always have for yourself. Make sure you download the handout which is provided in the handout section. And now we still have a lot of colleagues hanging around with us. So let me go to some questions. Just one second. All right. Uh, I have some comments which say this was a great presentation. Thanks. Uh, the first question, I think it goes to either Matthias you or maybe Arun. I have an interface level transmitter, which is Endress Hauser in my three phase separator, and it needs to be validated or calibrated at interval for proper level measurement. How is it carried out with aid of heart? or any other protocol? Are my speakers still there? Yeah, Dinesh. Um, I think Matthias, you would be taking care of this. 
Oh, sorry, sorry, muted. Sorry. Yeah, 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 I was muted. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, could, could you just just repeat the question? So, so he wants so to. So do... the customer has a three-phase interface uh, separator, okay, and he wants to validate the results. So, as in, there's one topic which we could not cover today because of the time frame which we are working in. What we have in our level instruments or gamma or flow measurement is something called heartbeat technology. And that is an excellent technology to validate your complete instrument itself. For sure, when you apply this particular technology in your application, it needs to be validated, which means that you need to figure out if it's really reading the interface which you are looking for and also the top level which you are looking for. Okay, so that's that's a possibility and yes, with the heart or even uh, other communication protocol, you can communicate with the instrument, you can initiate validation procedures, and then you will get a result back whether the validation procedure went through or not. Okay. Correct. <clears throat> Let me just look at uh, one uh, second question which comes from Onkar. Uh, for Gamma application with internal bent tube, Many internal support from separator inner walls are required to hold the pipe. And if yes, who will design and supply for this internal support? So that's you, for you, Arun. Yeah, so we do have uh, uh, colleagues from the engineering team who can support you with the bent dip tube. Okay. And yes, regarding the supports, we typically recommend that you have an internal welding so that you hold this bent dip tube. This is also the reason why I said a straighter dip tube is always preferred. But this also depends from case to case basis. There are uh, separators where you see a lot of vibrations and then you need, of course, an internal support. But we also know customers who have a bent dip tube, uh, also depending on the uh, degree of bent bendness, but they do install it directly without any internal support as well. So, yeah, but we do support you to take away. We do support or we do provide the internal deep tube in itself if you want. Yeah. Uh, can you guys hear me? Uh, Arun yeah. Prashant? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was, I had some technical issue and I, I was lost for just a bit. <clears throat> yeah, the what question is, is maximum... finished. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Arun. I, I was... My sound, uh, I had some sound issues, so I was uh, gone for a uh, bit. Now, the next question is for Erwin. What is the maximum flow rate that can be measured from choke manifold using this technologies? Ooh, that is an, uh, not such an easy question now just to answer like, like that. But I have to go back to uh, the applicator software you already mentioned. Applicators are our sizing and selection software and my first uh, choice would be to enter the, the data in, in applicator and there you get a very good indication what flow meter would be suitable to measure a specific uh, flow rate okay all right so th there are <clears throat> still a lot of questions in our uh, chat window and what i can suggest is uh, guys uh, we have run out of time in fact, our 45 minute presentation has already uh, reached close to one hour. The rest of the questions, we will definitely answer them offline, meaning we will look at the questions coming from different participants of this online seminar and we will get back to you. Uh, having said this, I would like to thank my speakers today, a special thanks. It's, it's holiday, it's a long weekend in Europe, uh, Switzerland, Germany. And uh, one of my speaker, he has a broken leg and he still managed to give a decent presentation. Good, thanks Arun. And uh, thanks, Erwin, you. once again, guys, a great dedication to see that you are joining in to support our customers. Any last words from your side? No, that Arun. was perfect from our side as well. Um, we, we look forward to the questions and uh, we can uh, give them the answers offline for sure. Thanks. Thanks, Arun. Matthias? Thank you. Very much. Yeah, I can only say thank you very much for joining the webinar. I hope we brought you some news uh, or some new knowledge and brought some value for you.
And yes, for sure, we will answer the questions. And if there are further questions, we or also our colleagues from the Anderson House of Sales Centers, they will be happy to support you in your separator applications. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to thank everybody. Uh, it is impossible to explain in eight slides all the ins and outs of the flow technology we have available for separators and in general. Please, like Matthias said, please get in touch with our sales organization. They can help you further to decide what would be the right, right solution for your application. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And don't forget, go online, go on internet, look for applicator Endress Hauser separation. And you will land on the page which I showed you. You can look at the measurement point. You can look at the options. As I mentioned, every challenge is different. Select the right instrument, and if you are getting stuck somewhere, feel free to contact us at any location in, in the world or even send out an email to us. Thank you, stay safe, and see you again once again next week. Bye bye.